Hello, and thank you for joining this webinar about the dual seal ball valve. My name is Bill Lanning, and I'm the API product manager for WOM. I've been in the valve business for over 40 years and have three patents associated with this dual seal valve concept. My contact information is on the screen in front of you, and it'll also be on the last page of this slide presentation. But first, let me tell you a little bit about WOM. Worldwide Oil Field Machine is a privately owned company established in 1980 and we're headquartered in Houston, Texas. We make a variety of pressure controlling products for the energy industry, for land, for offshore and subsea. But today we're going to specifically focus on our patented dual seal ball valve. Now valves may not be important to a lot of people, but they can be very expensive. The picture you're seeing in front of you uh, is a picture of a customer of ours replacing one of their valves that had only been in service four years with one of our valves. Four years is not a very long time for an expensive piece of equipment like a valve to have to be pulled out of the service. There's a, real, there's a lot of costs associated with a valve that's leaking prematurely. Of course, if you have a leak product and it's leaking down from the custody point of your uh, containment, then you've lost that product. You've also, when you find out you got a leak, then that you have to spend money to purge the line so you can open it up. Then you've got the cost for all the lift and safety equipment, of course, and all the downtime and rescheduling costs are, are expensive. The least expensive item is perhaps the replacement valve itself. And then you, if you're in bad shape, you might actually have some costs for fines and leaks. So we're trying to avoid all of those unnecessary costs with a better product than what you've been able to buy previously. In our industry, in the pipeline industry, you typically had a gate valve or a ball valve for a choice. People used gate valves for decades because they had a, a gate in the middle of the valve and a seat, a primary and a secondary on either side of that gate. The good news about a gate valve is that you have that redundant sealing technology with the primary and the secondary seat, but there's some negatives also. Gate valves are large and they have that rising stem that's constantly going in and out of the pressure containing zone. So you constantly have stem leaks and the deliveries are usually long and it's expensive to automate those kind of valves. Now, when elastomer technology improved, then people were able to rely on trunnion mounted ball valves to seal because they're more compact. The stem is a non-rising stem. It just rotates in the valve and uh, the valve itself is more, more economical to manufacture. The negative, of course, is the fact that it's only got a single seat that's pushed by the pressure against the ball. So gate valves have two seats, ball valves only have one. But what if you could put the sealing characteristics of a gate valve inside the body of a ball valve? You would have the best of both worlds of compactness, a uh, quarter turn stem and the double seal of a gate valve. Well, that's exactly what the WOM dual seal ball valve has accomplished. We put a primary and a secondary seat on each side of that ball in the valve. It's a remarkable accomplishment, and uh, but it wasn't easy to do. We have to maintain the industry end-to-end -end dimensions, but we were able to cram a double set of seats inside that valve. So this slide is showing us a cross section of the entire valve and the blue piece is our primary seat. The red piece is our secondary seat. And we have a pair of those on one side of the, the ball and then another pair on the other side of the ball. Here's a short video showing how the primary seat works. It's pretty interesting. It's simple. It uses line pressure, which is the green stuff you see on the screen, and it's going to push that blue seat, the primary seat, in against the ball. 
your ceiling surface is here and then the pressure is trying to get up to that o-ring it has a piston effect which forces that seat in against the ball here's the secondary seat in case the primary ever gets damaged these two work in tandem but they don't work together what they do is the if the primary ever gets damaged what we're showing right here the pressure bleeds past it instantly pressurizes the back of the outer seat the, the red secondary seat and pushes it into position against the ball so you have a brand new seat ceiling and a brand new surface on the ball it's very simple but it, and it works really well now what you're seeing here is a, a, a view of a valve as if you had x-ray vision you were looking down through the top of it and this is going to give you the secret on why the secondary seat outlasts the primary seat in the dual seal ball valve what happens is with the green pressure you see here it's trying to get downstream trying to get past the ball and go downstream well the valve is in a closed position and what we're going to do is open the valve up and you're going to see that the primary seat here isolates the pressure away from that secondary and keeps the damaging pressure from attacking that soft insert so here we go so right there the pressure has stopped the pressure is isolated by the primary seat and it's protecting the secondary there's no pressure in the body and the pressure behind the secondary is relieved but the primary still has the valve closed so the primary is doing all the work it is keeping the pressure from damaging that outer seat so we'll let that ride and go all the way open you also look down here you think of the primary as acting like a squeegee to clean that ball off every time that valve is cycled so the primary seat's doing all the work. The secondary is there to take over in case the primary ever gets damaged. Here's an interesting wrinkle on our valve. We can have a pair of seats that are identical to each other on each side of that ball, but we don't have to. In this case, we, we have a, an arrangement of seats that we call the optional third seal and this is going to be the seal on the downstream side of that valve where we change all we do is change the location of an o-ring and it changes the way that seat works entirely so what we've got is an outer seat here this the and that o-ring right there would normally be there if it was a two by two seal but here we we're putting the third seal in and when the pressure enters the valve body cavity either because of upstream seats are damaged or just because you've cycled the valve what happens is this o-ring is now missing we have replaced it with this o-ring that's between the primary the blue piece and this lavender piece and so what happens is it allows the pressure to get in behind this outer seat the pressure is trying to get downstream it's stopped by that o-ring it's stopped by that o-ring and suddenly you've created a piston area that's higher pressure than what's behind it so it forces this seat in against the ball on the back side of the ball remember this is the downstream side of the valve you've got a, a brand new seal on the downstream side of the ball so that as the pressure in intensifies in the body cavity that increases the sealing ability of that seat it's a remarkable addition to the valve and it's effectively like having three different valves bolted together in a line now we have a couple different model valves that are available our model 30 can be identified by having a lower trunnion that's bolted on it's an external trunnion and an upper trunnion so those two trunnions 
are um, aligned with two counterbores inside the valve body, inside the ball, and it allows that ball to pivot, making it easy to open and close. The Model 30 size range is from 2 inch through 30 inch in all the typical ASME uh, standards. We also have a Model 40, a little later version that's right now available in 2 inch through 12 inch. And that goes from 600 class to 1500 class. And we also make that same Model 40 in the API 6A versions, 2 and a 16th through 7 and a 16th inch, when uh, the customer needs a, an API 6A rated valve. The only difference between the two, the Model 40 and the Model 30, is the way the ball is supported. The Model 40, shown here has an internal trunnion block up and and down up you know on the top of the ball and the bottom of the ball and it's split and that split allows us to put the stem in first and because this is a captive stem it cannot blow out through that small hole you put the stem in first you put the ball in then you wrap these trunnion blocks on either side of the ball and either side of the body as you assemble the valve. And uh, so it allows us to have a trunnion block valve, but also have a positively blowout proof stem. Now some of the a few details of the valve, uh, every one that we make, the minimum material selection would be carbon steel seats with nickel plating and a nickel plated ball. With some customers and some applications, though, if you've got some uh, corrosion in the line, they have asked us to inlay the seat pocket with a corrosion resistant alloy, either 316 stainless or perhaps Inconel. It adds a lot of life expectancy to that valve. Another option that we offer is a metal to metal sealing valve the ball would have a tungsten carbide coating on it and the primary seat would also be tungsten carbide coated. So you get a polished lapped metal to metal seal between the primary seat and the ball. But the unique thing about our valve is the fact that we have a outer seat that still has a soft seat. So you've got the best of both worlds here also. You've got a metal to metal seating valve, but you've also got a soft insert that allows you to get it to be a uh, bubble tight. Here's a slide showing how every valve we make from two inch on up has a seat grease fitting on either end of the valve that communicates between the primary seat o-ring which is here and the secondary seat o-ring which is here. If you pump grease in, it channels down through and between these two O-rings and travels around the diameter of the seats. And then when you fill that annulus up between the two seats, it's going to travel out and come in contact with the ball and then wash into the flow bore. So it naturally takes any trash or anything that has accumulated between the two seats and washes them away. The WOM stem seals are quite effective. This is the area that we're going to focus in on the next slide. What we have is we have a lower and an upper O-ring that initially catch the pressure inside the valve that's trying to get out. This number three is a grease pack area that can be recharged from the outside of the valve. And the last seal we have for stem seal protection is a a self-energized lip seal. So we have four separate stem barriers that have to leak before this valve is ever going to leak to atmosphere. We're pretty proud of our packing and uh, the, in the stem sealing arrangement. And we say that it's maintenance free because you really are not going to have to do anything with it unless you see a physical leak. And if you do, then you have a provision through this grease fitting to re-energize that grease pack that's in that stem packing. But we put this tag on there to tell you not to grease the valve in the stem seal area unless you see a physical leak because we don't want you to do any harm to the valve. 
Now, every vow we make has passed the ISO 15848 fugitive emissions test. And uh, we did that early on in the, in the lifespan of this valve. And so every valve that's out there now is manufactured according to and passes that ISO fugitive emission standard. Also, every bow we make is uh, from two inch on up. He has passed the 6FA fire test. In addition, it may have also passed the ISO test or the API 607 test. They're all very similar and, and all, but the baseline test that we have every valve pass is the 6FA test. And one of the questions I'm asked all the time is how much longer our valve is gonna last than everybody else's since it's got twice as many seals as every other valve in the market and maybe three times as many seals if you opt for that third seal. Well, what we did is we rigged up a test in our shop. We have a four inch valve here that was a 600 class. So the maximum working pressure is just under 2000 pounds of pressure. We rigged it up to where this actuator would open the valve once it reached full working pressure. In other words, it's gonna, it was gonna dump all that air pressure out of the valve immediately when it re reaches that high pressure. And that's a typical dump valve situation. And it's fairly uh, hard on the valve because you're, you're immediately trying to rip those seats, those soft seats out of the valve as you open it. Well, we wanted to keep track of the counts and the number of cycles. So we have a digital counter. Every time that this valve is cycled, that, that counter will uh, note the cycle. And after a hundred blowdowns, then we would test the seats to make sure that the seats were still working. Well, this took several months and we got over 20,000 blowdowns and the valve was still holding perfectly. So we gave up on the test. We went on to bigger and better things. Now, speaking of actuation, uh, every valve we make has an ISO mounting pattern so we can very easily mount an actuator on every valve we make. And uh, that can be hydraulic, pneumatic, electric, whatever. This is a chart showing our the typical pressures that our valves are be are made to. You know, we've got your uh, ASME working pressures here that coincide with the ANSI class numbers here, and then the API class numbers here are the same working pressures. Now, every valve we make is a double block and bleed valve. Everyone they everyone you get. In addition, though, you have the choice. You can add, if you want this to be a double isolation and bleed valve, you can configure that secondary seat to do that. Or in the illustration I showed you earlier about the optional third seal, that's the same thing as this double isolation and bleed number two. So you can have all three of these as choices for your valve needs. Now here's a picture of a 24 inch valve at the end of a pipeline. This is in crude oil service and here's a pig launcher. And the reason why this photo is here is to give you a perfect illustration of a place where you would use that optional third seal. Since this is the end of that pipeline, then this end of the valve is the upstream side and we would you would have the primary and the secondary seats on this side of the valve and then you would have the optional third seal on this side of the valve because when you blow this launch tube down this becomes the low pressure side and that third seal is your last barrier in case you have a failure of these two seals upstream. So when you open this trap door after the pressure's blown out and you stick your face in there looking at this pig launch tube, you'll be lucky that you'll have three separate barriers between you and that pipeline pressure. We're the only valve in the industry that offers this opportunity to give you extra protection. 
Now here's a picture of a, a 16 inch valve with Buckeye pipeline up near Ill in uh, Illinois. And uh, originally they started with one valve in their station and it worked so well, they selected another one and then they slowly replaced every single valve in that station and all the surrounding Buckeye stations with WOM dual seal valves. And in liquid service, they're great, but this valve also works perfectly well in natural gas service. This is a 28 inch valve that is one of many valves that we have in natural gas service in, this happens to be in Romania, but we have valves in natural gas service in uh, Pennsylvania and other places in the United States. So to wrap this up, we have the, a very low maintenance valve. We didn't talk too much about that, but that's not the part of this presentation that uh, we were aimed at. But we have the only valve in the industry that has two independent seats on each side of that ball. You have the choice of that optional third seal also, as we saw. We've got four separate stem seals. Each of those seats or the stem have sealant injection fitting so in case you have a problem you can do something externally to the valve to at least temporarily fix the problem every valve we make is double block and bleed the valve cannot trap pressure so you don't need any kind of uh, thermal relief device which is really just one more uh, potential leak point and that's a uh, but that changes if you opt for one of those uh, double isolation and bleed profiles. One of them does require a, a pressure relief device for the valve. And we've had these valves in service for a long time now, and we've got a proven track record. So we uh, can stand by our product pretty proudly. Well, you're smarter now than you were based on being able to uh, see this presentation. So please contact WOM if you've got any further questions. There's my contact information again, and I appreciate your attention.